too. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry I didn't get to capture what Megan just said. <laughs> it probably comes with all the right holes too. What are you talking about over there? <laughs> We're just glancing through the uh, Men's Health magazine on their uh, uh, article on the sex robots. Okay, we yeah. will get to the sex robots uh, mm -hmm. a little bit later in the show though, mm -hmm. because um, this is kind of a big deal. And um, I actually, now that I'm looking at this, I don't think I put it in the outline, but it's in here. Um, so, <laughs> God, I don't know, you guys. Has anybody gotten outside yet? Oh, yeah, for a few moments. Yeah, enjoy today, because I guess we're going to be getting some rain the rest, of the, rest it sounds, of the week. It sounds like it goes all the way into the Memorial Day weekend coming up. It goes back and forth, yeah. Well, you know, but in case it's rainy, you'll be able to shop on Monday, daytime hours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 10 to 6, get your Memorial Day sex toys. Well, okay, so I have a question for you guys, um, or rather a story really quick, because this, okay. is, this is pretty good stuff, and I'm trying mm -hmm. to decide what types of favors I should rack up because of what happened. Okay. So I think I mentioned a while ago, I bought this pontoon and mm. then it, I got it for like a thousand bucks. And it's like, it's amazing that it runs. Well, then we had some issues because it's so old and it doesn't have a motor that you can move really up and down. And, and where we are on our lake is very shallow. So we're having trouble. So we thought we were going to have to sell it. Mm -hmm. Like it absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, wasn't going to work on our lake. And then lo and behold, the clouds parted, the angels sang and Carl figured it out on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We go for this kick-ass pontoon, right? It was fabulous. We got our little canopy up. We're like, Dylan geezer is the name of our pontoon appropriately. And we're arguing over whether it's male or female. Cause he said, ships are always female. I say bullshit. I can make mine a guy if I want, but, mm -hmm. um, and besides it's a, you know, gender identity. I mean, we mm -hmm. can't be labeling people. <laughs> so anyway, we, we go out and we do the ride. And so, um, I'm in the house doing whatever. And he comes in with this look on his face and he's like, I, I just lost the pontoon key in the lake. I'm like, it was on a floating keychain. How did you do that? Mm -hmm. And he showed me that the little, you know, the little metal thing you think broke. Mm -hmm. And the key. Oh. So, and we had one key. Oh, oh no. Okay. That's one key. One key. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get the dupes made because I thought I was going to have to get a different pontoon. So I wasn't. And then he goes and loses it. <laughs> and he, he wants to start explaining and give me all these. And I'm like, just don't be speaking to me right now. Just don't stop. So yesterday we we're supposed to get stormy. It was looking weird. I go out onto the dock to get the chairs in and I thought just for fun the lake is calm at the moment let me just mm -hmm. see if I can find the key and I did yeah. and I got it so I called him up he was driving to work I go do you have any idea the extent to which you are now my bitch and I'm <laughs> laughing <laughs> and he goes you found the pontoon key he knew exactly what I was referring to <laughs> Well, at least, they, well, yeah, I mean, obviously it was going to be near the dock because the key has to, you know, you, but, his, but even so, I mean, it's a lake. I mean, it's nature. Nature it, nature wants to kill you. Nature wants to, like, hide things from you. <laughs> nature is generally not pleasant. I mean, you know, we, we try. We try and think that nature's on our side. It's not. No. No, no, it's not. But see, he, here's what his fear was, Colleen. He had been, he, it, he said, I don't know how long I'd been stomping around. And it's kind of mucky where we oh, are okay. there. He so, goes, he, so he goes, I felt I probably just buried it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what, so the fact that I was able to even see part of it sticking up was like amazing. Mm -hmm. So I think I should make a long laundry list of sexual favors that he now owes me. What do you guys think? Well, yeah, he first, needs no, to go to Fantasy Gifts. Yeah, yeah, He's on a shopping yeah, trip. Yeah, the I'm first thing right though now. is, you know, once all that's done is get a second key made. Oh, I did that yesterday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's two new keys. There's two on a floaty keychain and one that's going to be hidden in the house. Mm -hmm. Say? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it's the Great Northern Sex Cast, and it's the triumphant return of Colleen. Yeah. How yeah. are you? I'm, I'm breathing. This is good. It's it's nothing like, I've always joked that I'm a perpetual toddler because, you know, I can't keep my shoes tied. My nose is always running. But yeah, now I have asthma. So I spent a couple of days in the hospital with a machine helping me breathe. Which, by the way, the one picture you posted did sort of look like a cross between the Chewbacca mask and a ball gag. Yeah, or, or, Bane, <laughs> or, or someone, you know, folks that are in cosplay, Bane, you yep. know, with the bit, yeah. Because I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, is that a Batman? Is that, I, my friends are geeks. I'm not like, is that a Batman villain? They're like, hey, you got <laughs> <right."> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was a little uh, a little frustrating because I you know it, you guys have known that I've you know missed a few broadcasts here because I'm coughing or I've got bronchitis or something like that. But that you know to actually be um you know hacking things you know up and all this sort of stuff was I mean, fairly unpleasant. I'm sure. Yeah, and you know you know feeling a lot better. You know no longer peeing in my pants when I cough. You know and I'm like the bar is set that low, folks. Really, that's how far. Well, it's a good day. <laughs> it's a good day if, when yeah. I'm, if I haven't peed my pants. Perfect. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, and I'm perfect, you know, and, and Megan knows me. And you've known me for a year. I, I have no problem saying that. <laughs> no, no. And, you know, funny that you bring that up. And Megan's probably sitting here going, oh, my God, it's all downhill from here. Mm -hmm. But it does. Have you 
you take a note, Colleen? Well, you don't watch regular TV, but um, that much. But I just am astounded at the number of um, commercials there are for incontinent products, catheters, um, you know, just all sorts of things for for failing, um, yeah, for getting old and not being able to not pee your pants. Well, no, it was it was fascinating because I did manage to cough out the muscles years ago, and I had a sling put in, and I've talked about it because when I was talking to uh, my doctor, he said most women are so embarrassed they will not mention it they won't even talk to the doctors i mean they can you know they'll, they'll lie when they're asked they just but i mean it's hard to work out you're coughing sneezing laughing i mean you can get this fixed you do not have to wear a pad yeah and just folks won't do it and i know that a few of my friends actually went in after i did and they're like oh my god this is great yeah uh childbirth or just the coughing i mean there's, there's absolutely no reason that you know that you cannot have it to fix you know that you know you you know, something can be done. All you got to do is say something. <laughs> yeah. And Although if fixed. you're worried about too, um, too many medical options or surgery or something like that, mm -hmm. always come in and get some Kegel balls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do your exercises, mm -hmm. strengthen yeah. that pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, that's not a bad idea just to do as a matter of habit anyway, as mm -hmm. a young person, just to, you know, sort of fend it off as long as you possibly can. <laughs> mm -hmm. Speaking of um, the stores, Meg, um, guys, I know we're getting into a really, really busy season for you guys. Um, sort of, I call it the festival season. What's going on at Fantasy Gifts now? Well, uh, we are uh, pretty much have finished all of the uh, store remodels for now. A uh, little, little, uh, little glitch out at Fridley with not a quite enough flooring in, but that ought to get finished soon. But now we're focusing on pride. Uh, the two new tents came in. We're going to have a, uh, let's see, what do we got? It's going to be a 20 by 20 booth this year. we got a lot of uh, vendors coming in. They've already sent merchandise. It's going to be a really, really fun weekend. Oh, I'm I so excited. So that's sort of where we are. And there's always, you know, there's always stuff. <laughs> but right now, it's just about uh, just about pride, getting that ready. Because it's only, i got a month away now. I know. Oof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Absolutely. getting ready. We've got some new products that come in, um, some new novelty stuff. We've got some pride lays with little rainbow. Um, one's got a little boob. One's got little penises. And we're excited. We were able to bring back our line um, of lubrication from a company called Wet. Mm -hmm. um, they're, I mean, they're really backed by popular demand, customer demand. People ask for them, and we did what we can to bring it back for customers um, because they've got a really nice line. It's um, a synergy line, so they're water, uh, water-based silicone hybrid lubes. You kind of mm -hmm. get the best of both worlds, and they have a, co a regular and then a warming and a cooling Oh, which okay. the wet rep, um, we just had our last seminar and he was just saying, you know, it's like sitting on a candy cane. Oh. It's Christmas in your pants. You know, it's a, <laughs> a great way to add a little minty tingle to your life. So we're excited to have those lines back in. And um, I think about four of our locations also have a warming lubricant. Um, uh, Burnsville, Bloomington, and uh, Fridley, and Coon Rapids I have flavored, warming flavored lubricant, which is uh -huh. um, something we've brought back by demand as well. Okay, uh -huh. so let me just ask you, I have a question, I, I, at the risk of uh -huh. sounding stupid, but whatever. Um, so the candy cane one, or the, the cooling one that's uh -huh. kind of minty and whatnot, could you use that with for like blowjobs? Or would that be yes. too much? No, no. I mean, it's meant for sex. So, and honestly, um, vaginas are a lot more sensitive. The skin tissue is a lot more sensitive than the penis, which is why, like, a lot of sensitizers, like cream, topical sensitizers, are split up male versions versus female versions because okay. the skin texture is different. Okay. But something like this lubricant would um, work for anyone. You could use it vaginally, uh, anally for blowjobs. But, I mean, you're going to get a mouthful of, of minty pleasure as well, you know, with the oral. But, yep, it's safe for use pretty much pretty much anywhere. So. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Um, just had an idea. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing nope. later. Um, you're going to buy some wet synergy cooling well, from the sounds be, of it. You know what? I'm going to be downtown this <laughs> After I get finished here, I, have, I actually have a business lunch. 
um, that I got to go do. And then um, f- my my puppy Fred um, is at the store working with my boyfriend. And then I was going to go collect Fred and walk him. And I can just walk to the downtown location if it's okay if I walk in with him for five minutes to buy something. And then um, and is it okay, yeah, Colleen? Uh, yeah, I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, uh, the gentleman working down there would not mind at all. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So Fred and I will get and, and it's it's wet what synergy wet. Synergy. Okay, yeah, the Synergy that. line, there's a, a basic of warming and a cooling because the Synergy is okay. the name for the um, water based silicone and hybrid. I, and versions. I want the cooling one if I want to do like a candy if you, blow job yes, later. Yes, yes. Okay, sure. perfect. You know, Christmas in May. Tuesday <laughs> night at Kelly's. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. So, um, ladies, Sarah Silverman, are you guys fans? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. She's done, um, she, she doesn't pull any punches. That's what I like about it. <laughs> just like, and, you know, and, and not and not a stupid woman. No. 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 Never, yeah. She's kind of she's kind of got the whole package. I just saw um a uh um another uh female comedian her name will come to me at some point during the podcast an HBO uh special and she was absolutely flat freaking hilarious and she goes into this whole thing about sex which I'll remember her name before the show is over but mm-hmm. Silverman is she's as be- she's beautiful and she's kind of got the whole package like Sarah does well Sarah's like really pissed at um, and this kind of goes along the line of that whether it, that southern female lawmaker that was wanting to legislate what guys do because there's so many rules around women and abortions mm-hmm. and per, you know permission oh, from yeah. a spouse okay well Silverman uh, worked some into her recent uh, stand up routine in Brooklyn and she talks about, okay, fine, um, you know, if if women have to ask permission and if they have to have, like, ultrasounds before they can finally uh, get an abortion, then we need to, or or do anything, really, mm-hmm. um, we got to start regulating sperm. Sperm is life. And so we've got to legislate that shit. <laughs> That's what she said. And so she said, um, you know, they've got to control male mas- m- masturbation um, because they're killing sperm cells every time they do it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty much for you know if you're if you're going to go for the Bible, there's it, it, you know is uh, is it onanism? I think it's the right term, spilling of the seed. You know, mm. if you're if you're truly you know going to uh, uh, you know be concerned about it, I would say, you know saying that uh, you know regulating sperm and having you know maybe going to the doctor before you mas- masturbate or <laughs> or uh, finding out you know uh, learning all about what, what what you know what happens to the little sperm. Maybe uh, you know maybe they could you know check out the, you know the insides of their testicles, see what that looks like. It's just, yeah, I mean, if, 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 if men's bodies were regulated one-tenth the amount that women's were, they would go insane. Yeah. <laughs> they would go insane. It, it has nothing to do, as, uh, honestly, it has nothing to do, in my opinion, with life. It just has to do with controlling women. Yeah. And that's all there is to it. There's, yeah, that's all it is. She was pretty mm-hmm. upset. I'm she, just hearing the Monty Python refrain, you know, every, every sperm, sperm is, is sacred. sacred. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, the first time I ever saw that movie, I absolutely just about died laughing. <laughs> I mean, that has got to be one of the funniest things. Yeah, that's I mean, a funny yeah, freaking movie. Yeah, that movie's like 40 years old, and we're still having, you know, it, it, nothing has, you know, we're still fighting. And, you know, it's tough, too, because if you're younger and you're listening, you take a lot of stuff for granted. And you shouldn't. I mean, you know, it's, it, just because you're able to do something now does not mean that it can't be, you know, grabbed away or someone will figure it out. I mean, you can pass all sorts of unconstitutional laws and then someone else has to fight it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no rule that a law has to be constitutional before it's passed. Right. And uh, it just folks need to know that, uh, that, you know, there was a lot of work and a lot of struggle, you know, so that, you know, women can have some reproductive freedom. Yeah. No mm-hmm. kidding. Well, I was really... Um, as intrigued as I was disturbed about Elijah Wood, um, a recent interview that he gave, um, it kind of was eye-opening, and I I sort of applaud him, really, um, for this. He says that there's a serious pedophilia problem in Hollywood. Mm. And um, he's only 35. And he He would know, though. I mean, he's been in Hollywood since, I mean, North. That's what I think of the movie when he was a young boy. Like, he... Yeah, has been around since a ch- you know child actor. Yeah, he has, and and he looks. I thought he was so freaky looking in the Lord of the Rings series. He looks so much more normal as an. Oh, as he's a so cute. He's a tiny little hobbit man. He's adorable. He's yeah, but he, he <laughs> said that you know there's a history of abuse scandals that are probably still going on, and he says you know I was a child actor. I sympathize. Now, he doesn't say that he was caught up in it, but he said he was fortunate enough to have his mother completely in his camp and looking out for everything for 
him. So it sounds like he didn't, he wasn't victimized, but he saw it. And he, the, here's a direct quote. He said, there are a lot of vipers in this industry and Hollywood has darkness in the underbelly. So what he's trying to do is uh, call attention to this. And he says, you know, he was, somebody threw out a question about uh, Woody Allen and, you know, he has condemned the media for failing to ask tougher questions and for overlooking allegations for people that are sort of lauded as accomplished artists. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good I, for him. I did, you know, I did, you know, click on it a little bit because I didn't want to be, you know, completely ignorant, you know, when we were talking. And I know that he's, you know, it was a Vanity Fair article, if I'm not mistaken, and that he was quoted in in a few things. And then he, he backtracked a little bit that he said that he's never actually witnessed anything and you know, so so is he talking for other folks? I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not dismissing what he's saying, but I'm just wondering. If, I'm like, who's? You know, is this going to go anywhere? Because if he says it never happened to me, I never actually witnessed it. Witnessed it, and he's hearing to just sort of you know hearing about it or knowing about you know it's the it's the open secret that nobody talks about. Mm -hmm. What's going to take? I mean, you know, take someone to like. Like, where's the person that's going to come first, like in Bill Cosby? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Because, right. you know, when you're talking about, you know, studio heads, because, I mean, I mean, Drew Barrymore was um, was uh, w was preyed on, you know, when, when they're younger. And I know that uh, the um, uh, Corey Haim and all those folks, you know, said that, you know, that they were, um, you know, that, that they were abused in certain ways. I'm not exactly sure. And I know that if you go back, I mean, there's the whole casting couch. I mean, um, who is the... Um, I mean, some of the young, you know, actresses when they were 18, you know, the doors would be locked <laughs> or 17 mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and it's going through there. And, you know, who's going to be the first person, you know, to say, you know, yeah, this happened. And now we, mm -hmm. you know, not, not stop it because it's going to, I think it's going to blow up huge because it's just been on most industries. I mean, you know, the, the Catholic Church already blew up. <laughs> now it's that was tight. a big one. Ooh. And uh, I can see that the same thing's going to happen. <laughs> You know, but someone has to come through, you know, first. He said it happened, but, you know, who's going to go, yeah, I was, I'm one of those people. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> My, well, and same with the Catholic Church. I mean, it blew up, but what's changed? Mm -hmm. Like, well, we're aware and we make jokes about it now. And there's but been some settlements paid, but better. They've the still shuffled run? these violators around in the church mm -hmm. and nobody's gotten in trouble. I've for not that. heard of anyone getting, I mean, any priests jail. getting arrested. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I have no idea. So what's going to happen, you know, uh, what's going to happen to the, you know, a studio head or a casting agent or this or that, you know, it going, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. But it's not, you know, it, it just, you know, there's no, it just, it, it, it's frustrating that, you know, that it's still folks can't come forward and say, you know, that, that they're going to be in, in you know, their, their reputation is going to be harmed, you know, more so than the person who supposedly did something. Yeah. 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 I mean, they get blacklisted. I mean, it's happened, mm -hmm. you know, to different people. I mean, just right here in the Twin Cities, I can tell you that I've known of a couple of radio personalities, females that have gone after sexual harassment allegations. And I can tell you right now from having been in the system here for 12 years, you're sexually harassed. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no question. But the three people that I know that went and they won their lawsuits and lost their careers. You will never work again in mm -hmm. this town and maybe anywhere else if you pursue it. Mm -hmm. And it's no joke. I've seen it for firsthand. So I'm thinking my guest, Colleen, going back to what you said a minute mm -hmm. ago, though, Elijah Wood, I think that um, more than likely he probably has heard stories from his contemporaries, his friends, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and he's probably just kind of speaking out. Megan, th that's a, an interesting segue to something that you sent. I want you to go ahead and set this up. That story about the Bible Belt being porn heavy. Do you remember? Did you read that one last weekend? <laughs> yeah, I went through it and um, just I, I know there was a bunch of graphs and such that I don't all remember. But essentially, the Bible Belt, the the southern part of the United States, had a much higher than average um, in their gay male searches and specifically black gay male porn um, hmm. is what the the southern states are turning to in on the internets to keep them cool at night i guess it's or already hot there or something <laughs> because well i was reading I, I went through the the article and yeah there's there's different protracted statistics depending on the type of porn and the, and the part of the country but that definitely stood out but they the suggestion was or the conclusion that was drawn by the people that were studying this was that higher degrees of restriction lead to more porn seeking yep. surprise 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 <laughs> not shocking 
So usually, yeah, I mean, it's over and over you hear the same things, but the most folks just will not, you know, they just they have their uh, their uh, their biases and they mm-hmm. they refuse to believe the actual facts. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think in places where um, racism can. St- I don't want to say racism is not present and everywhere still, mm-hmm. but in where it can be more on the surface, a little more part of the culture of the state um, in the southern half. Like, eh, because if you feel like a certain race is different, you're going to um, fetishize them. We yeah. see that so much in porn where it's like, this is. Asian porn. This is Latin porn. This is black men porn. So if there's... I didn't realize that, you guys. Oh, it's no, huge. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. I mean, I mean, you're allowed to be turned on by things, but there's a difference between, uh, you know, uh, being just, you know, that's your preference mm-hmm. and why it's your preference. Right. Because it mm-hmm. seems like, you know, if it is tied into the race where we see them, they, if they see a race as a different type of of person than having sex with this different type of person is new and exciting and unique and something, you know, they're going to get, not going to get from their, their cohorts, if you will, their peers. I mean, the same thing with, uh, you know, age related, you know, Mm -hmm. the the, the grandmother or grand, you know, grandfather, or occasionally there's, yeah, um, you'll have the folks that are, um, or the uh, folks that like to see uh, uh, pregnant porn Mm -hmm. and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. It was interesting that the whole, top half essentially like a lot of the midwest and stuff was um their highest uh gay porn search was straight males Mm -hmm. which i also it was like you're either looking if you're on one half of the country you're looking for straight men uh forced to have gay sex Mm -hmm. or you are looking for black men in the other half (laughs) yeah it's really interesting because i mean and every about every few months maybe three times a year we'll see stories like this that sort of look at the different things and and well i've got a couple of 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 really good a lot of stuff that's backed by science today Mm -hmm. so we'll we'll go into this and and how they i want to be in the committee meetings where they where they're deciding who gets the money to fund studies and whatever when, when they pitch these things it's like <laughs> whoa blah 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 well we'll go into that in a minute um so um the the lipstick story Megan I thought this I got so tickled when you sent this to me over the weekend these are penis lipsticks and they're cute they're really cute um I there's two lines mentioned one of them is princessa and the one that you had was like mushroom and the mushroom ones are really cool looking um but I tried this stuff like 20 years ago I used to be oh. really good friends with um, someone whose husband is like lifestyle condoms is one of the biggest uh, manufacturers in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay. He had the entire United States. Okay. So Mm. rich dude, but very much into the industry and would go to the, all the events that I'm sure Tara shops at for you guys, Mm -hmm. buys Mm -hmm. for fantasy Mm -hmm. gifts. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, he found it and brought it back. And 20 years ago, they gave me some and I'm like, this is not only hilarious, it's good lipstick. Is it? That was it my is. question. I was like, this can't yes. be good lipstick. They did sell lipsticks years ago. I'm not sure what happened to them. One, they, you know, they would get, you know, mangled and so it was a little tough. It's hard to keep them, you know, from getting, but I don't remember, I just remember them being fairly average, sort of like the, you know, like Walgreens brand, you know, like $2 lipsticks, but yeah, I don't know. No, we had penis lipsticks years ago, but I'm not sure. Like I said, a lot of our novelties now just tend to be edible or you can use them right then or wear them. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Had, mm-hmm. Like, you know, we, you know, we don't really sell the jumping dick anymore. And just because you slap a condom on it or, you know, paint a penis on it does not make it funny anymore. Like I said, Mid- Midwestern is very practical. Can the bride <laughs> or groom wear it? Can we eat it right now? If these things, you know, <laughs> can we drink out of it? You know, these are, you know, right. very, very practical novelties. I was just shocked, though, because I don't know, I guess they're making a comeback, but these things were so... Uh, realistic but i'm like well, they had the ones with the veins and yeah stuff. They they were were like okay, so is, veiny I'm to, uh, okay I miss, <laughs> i'm gonna have a look at them up and see how they compare with what we used to sell nope they're i yeah and if, if you ask me i can send you the link to the one that i know that i've tried that at the time was really good lipstick mm-hmm. which i just thought was so funny right mm-hmm. um because you know have you guys noticed that though lately like with the 
upsurgence of, you know, the de- not department store, but rather drugstore selling brands of cos- not just the cosmetics, but like the moisturizers and things like that. I don't know anybody that goes and buys like the really expensive crap at the department stores anymore. Do you? No. no. I'm cheap. Yeah, I'm cheap too, but the stuff has gotten better. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't I don't even wear it. Do you do you moisturize or anything? Oh God, no! I do jack. I just, oh, it's a, okay. it's an, I'm like I can't stand the smell of it. I can't stand the feel of it. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's okay. My kid makes up for it. She loves makeup. Okay, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, but so it's it's not surprising anymore to find something that's not that expensive that's pretty damn good. Yeah, mm-hmm. was that where I was going with that? Mm-hmm. So and Colleen just blew me completely out of the water. But it's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so back back to the uh, the thing. All right, this one killed me. Um, more sex could lead to changes in genitals and bigger penises. What guy uh, isn't going to be happy to hear that? <laughs> uh, the guy that's not getting any might yeah, not yeah, be yeah, happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Does it say it shrinks with unuse? Or... No. But okay, here's, here's the thing, though. Okay. I, okay. T- t- tell us the science. Let's go. Science. Okay. Yeah. Science time. Come on. Science time. I was. Uh, I couldn't click on this fast enough. But this was, <laughs> this, <laughs> this was not a human study. This was a study done on... And it had to be named this, burying beetles. Mm. They're burying it too much and their penises are getting bigger. And what's hysterical, this is, this is called sexual conflict. And they noticed the change is occurring evolutionarily in just 10 generations. And I suppose that could happen in a fairly short time because they're bugs, not people. Mm-hmm. So we could get 10 generations maybe in a year. Who knows? But the more that they had sex, the penises got bigger in the uh, males, but the females developed like claws. So what's the use of having it get bigger if the female's just going to snip it off? (laughs) Well, well, maybe the problem is their, their parts aren't getting bigger. That would be a very unfortunate evolution if the dicks keep getting bigger and bigger, but the vaginas stay the same size. Which is why they, they need defense yes. mechanisms. So they need oh. to claw it away. Right. Like, get ah, away from ah. me. Well, just trim it down a bit. The line that <laughs> slayed me in this article oh, okay. was, in addition, too much sex can be costly for female burying beetles because it reduces their ability to provide parental care. Because they're always <laughs> over getting off and they're not taking care of the babies. <laughs> really? How much care does a bug a bee? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bug. I mean, it's, it's a bug. It's a bee. Okay, I, I don't understand. That's a very good point. What, what you... <laughs> very good point. So there must have been an earlier study on the, <laughs> on the, I don't on the know. parenting habits of this damn beetle. Sorry, I just don't know. I know. I know. So in other penis news, this is Penis Palooza today. Okay. Um, there was a penis size study, and I love how they did this one. Okay. This one took More place. Science. Yeah, this one took place in California. Seventy-five women participated, and um, they they showed them basically dildos of different sizes and shape. And I thought the findings of this one were kind of cool. Um, okay, the average length that women preferred for a long-term relationship was six point three inches. With a girth of 4.8. I was going to guess seven. I was close. Oh. You were very close. But for one night stands, they want bigger They want bigger junk. 6.4 inches and a girth of five. Wait, Not, wait, 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 wait 6.3 to 6.4? I know. Oh, come on. I mean, really. But what's interesting here was is, is that they broke it up into relationship type. That women wanted something however slightly larger for a one night stand, but they wanted something more practical, practical and comfy for the long haul for the short term or for the long term Mm -hmm. things. I thought that was fascinating. Yes. No, that makes sense. I mean, I've been in relationships where they're the size is is not quite working out. And uh, that can be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. (laughs) It's like, I really like you, but could you just make your penis a little skinnier, please? Yeah. And and if someone's too tall, too short, I mean, your bodies need to work together. I mean, if if you're just, if if you don't fit, you don't fit. Mm hmm. Or, you know, or, you know. It's like the opposite of cats. If it, it, if it fits, fits, I sits. It's, it's, yeah. If it don't fit, I, I sit, still sit, yeah. <laughs> oh. Then there was a penis look study. <laughs> and here's another one. It's almost like a beauty contest. This was interesting, too. Um, they took This happened uh, in Switzerland. Did you see this one, Meg? No, I, I, no, it just reminded oh, me. I wanted... tell me it means, t- please tell me people were looking at dick pics. They were. <gasps> 20 p- different pictures okay. and 105 women um, in Switzerland were asked to rate them. Okay. And the order in which, and size was not their number one at all, not even close. Um, so it really came up to the number one thing was general overall appeal. 
what's what's your you know best foot forward or your best whatever testicle forward um, was the first thing. Next was that it was it be normal looking, no bumps, bends, or growths. Mm -hmm. That's probably good. Mm -hmm. Three quality of skin and the girth that those came in together tied. Then the next was appearance of pubic hair and whether basic whether or not there was manscaping done or if mm -hmm. it was just allowed to be disgusting. And then finally, the shape of the head and the opening to the urethra. And size wasn't even on the list. Oh, wow. It was just whether or not it's a good-looking penis. What do you well, think? Well, honestly, if it's just a dick pic, you might have a difficult time ascertaining size. Right, without the be, context. Yeah, without you know, the whole you know, the whole, whole thing going. I can see sort of, yeah, you don't want something veering off. Unless, of course, you veer off, because then, you know, it gets back to whether the, You're two, sure. whether the two people fit together. Yeah. Um, but I just, you know, it's like, so do they just, like, randomly, sur I mean, so where do they get the dick pics? Did they mention that at all? It's just, like, random, I mean. They were, they, were <laughs> they sent it up a Tinder account for a day, and they got just flooded with it. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> they were ethnically balanced. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm trying to figure out, yeah. because we've got all of these penises. But if someone says, okay, we need 100 penis pictures. But if someone, one picking them out, I mean, how do you know that person hasn't picked out, like, the best looking penises already? Or, already. Yeah. And then well, you're just judging the cream of the crap, yeah, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, I just want to know what they, I just but, want to know who, like, sorry. But no, these were, this, once again, this was a scientific study. I wonder what, how would it, I am, um, mm, Switzerland, huh? Because I imagine so much is cultural. Um, because I know, like, <clears throat> when I saw my first uncircumcised penis, did it freak you like, out? Like live in action, I was like, "What the fuck is that?" Like, I don't, I don't even know what to do with this. Like the hand, notice. these futile hand gestures. Yes, yeah. that's what I was like. What I don't understand. About. Oh, okay, I, <laughs> I don't I'm, like, I'm not even sure I even noticed. I went, "Oh, oh." <laughs> did you Did you go through that? Oh yeah, I mean, I dated oh, yeah. him for a while, so yeah. it, it. But the, that first time, I was like, "This is really scary. I don't get it." You, and I'm like, "Well, learning curve, I guess. Oh. It's an, another skill to add, you know, to your skill set. You need mm -hmm. them all." So yeah. Well, let me let me ask you this: um, Do you guys have any strong feelings on circumcision versus not? Um, I don't really care personally in a partner. I think that if I had um, had a boy, I probably wouldn't have done it. Really. Yeah, I know that a few folks have had to uh, have it done later um, for medical reasons, and it's been very, really uncomfortable. But uh, I, I do believe that there's more and um, more and more folks that aren't doing it. Some folks do mm -hmm. it just because they want you know want them to look like dad or this or that. Um, probably you know wouldn't have made the choice, and I'm not even um, unless of course like I said uh, I adopted. So maybe if it had been done beforehand, you know I wouldn't have had a choice. But I don't think it was you know would have been done. In a lot of other places. I do think it's kind of cruel. I've gotten now to where I, I'm kind of equating it to when they cut off the tips of dogs' ears or chop their tail off so that they look more pleasing to the eye. Mm -hmm. If there's, It seems like we've come to a point where science is saying it's not necessary. necessary. So you're yeah. like electively choosing to cut the genitalia of your child for... I mean, aesthetic what is reasons. essentially aesthetic reasons? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, like I said, it took me a little while to <laughs> get used to it, but it does seem like a better, a more appropriate option, a more well, yeah. ethical option, really. Well, you know, I have a friend who didn't uh, circumcise his son who is now like 18, and he said, no, that's mutilation. Forget it. It's not going to happen. But I will tell you from a personal note, and it's okay if I talk about this because both of the parties involved are deceased, but my dad, I guess, was not circumcised, and it really bothered my mom. But you have to understand, they grew up in an era when that was mm -hmm. like everybody got circumcised. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, mm -hmm. the, the social trends have a lot to do with it, too. You know what Definitely. I mean? You don't want to be yeah. the only uncircumcised kid when everybody else is. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And then that that's just shows how kind of skewed it is that we are mm -hmm. deciding whether or not to cut young men for social standards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I refuse to do it to my dogs, so why mm -hmm. should we do I mean, you know, not not mm -hmm. circumcision ears. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. obviously we neuter and we stay. <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> just wanted to make sure that I said that. Um, okay, so... Um, Here's something that came across. I, I put these two stories back to back because they kind of led into another one. There was a um, 
a story in the uh, Glasgow Journal, it, so Scotland, over the weekend talking about kids are drinking and smoking less, but they're having riskier sex. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, those wily little brats, we, you know, we just get them, you know, trained on one thing and then they, you know, start falling back into a different uh, habit. And this was a pretty huge study, 11,200 kids um, over a period of years. And um, they really, um, their alcohol, this was fascinating to me, alcohol and cigarette smoking were cut in half in, in just a three-year period. But during that time, um, their, uh, their, uh, 20, per, they, their, it tripled how many of them were having risky sex tripled. I suppose you need, I suppose when you're a kid, you have to feel sort of invincible. And if you've got a lot, I would, if you were to probably take a look at Scotland's or any country's budget for education, how much you want to bet that the sex education went down and the anti-smoking and the mm -hmm. anti-drinking uh, education went up mm -hmm. yeah. as you're going through there or, you know, where, where it's, where it's going, you know, going through there. Cause I know I just saw today that in the U S um, only 15, uh, it dropped two points. Only 15% of the U S population is now smoking. How now, many percent? Only 15%. Wow. Okay. And it was, mm. it was at 17 for quite a while. It's made a, a quite a, a drop. Now there are, um, they're, they're, they know that more folks are, are vaping and they're not sure what's, you know, going to be whether or not as kids you know, trying to get that, keep that out of kids' hands because they're not sure whether folks get addicted to nicotine that just by starting to vaping, not using it to remove yourself from cigarettes, but just start doing it if I might lead them to cigarettes later. Like a gateway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll do it that way. Well, well, you see that like you, there's, you know, DARE programs and the, was it the target market, uh, truth campaign where they had yeah. all the anti-smoking commercials they would go to some you know um times square and like a thousand people would fall over and pretend to be dead and it's like no smoking but when do you ever see sex education ads mm -hmm. you know if you can run an anti-smoking ad on television during prime teenage viewing market why not have an ad about the use yeah. of condoms yeah, because you have condom ads, but they're usually a lot at night. But but and no, there's no, weird no, and subtle too, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, how's the kid gonna know? Oh, this firework means that I could get an STD, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah just to be able to. That's go what my dick's say, gonna feel yeah. like if I catch one, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, because you know, then they would be, oh my god, people will go insane. Oh my god, you're promoting sex. Well, no, I'm promoting people being intelligent about sex because they're going to have sex. Nobody needs to promote sex. Mm -hmm. the no, human, the, true. The, the human <laughs> brain does it all on its own. You know, they, you know, they would figure it out whether, whether, whether someone said yay or nay to it. They're going to figure it out. I mean, hell, didn't anyone ever see Blue Lagoon? <laughs> so, yeah. You know, we go through, oh, God, there's an ancient reference. But I'm saying oh they're going to figure yeah. it out. You know, so I saw that movie. I got it, too. too. Yeah, yeah, I saw you. And it just, it's one of those things. And I'm like, you know, yeah, go there. It's like, yeah. It, yeah. Someone actually said, yeah, you're probably going to do this. Do it right. Do it safe. Do it respectfully. Here you go. You know, but oh my God, people go insane. Oh, Jesus Christ, people drive me nuts. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let's run through some of the myths here. And this uh, is an okay. epidemiologist talking, guys. I couldn't believe in 2016 these are still out here. I'm curious because okay. if I uh, believe yeah. any yeah. of them. Yeah, I'm like, to... okay, I want to see. If I... Okay, first one, you can't get diseases through oral sex. Oh, oh no. Ah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you can. You can yeah. get gonorrhea, mm -hmm. chlamydia, syphilis, HPV, herpes, and all of that kind of stuff. HIV, not so much, but there is a slight risk. Colleen and Megan aren't even speaking. Um, <laughs> the next myth, if you feel fine, you are fine. No. no okay. No, no, no. The next one. You'll know if your sex partner has an STD by looking at them. <laughs> People oh. actually think that this actually came in. Yes. Oh, my God. If you've had sex with someone once, you're probably okay. Mm, uh, oh, that's the same with the pregnancy myths, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, what, you, <laughs> you just you can't get pregnant with a one night stand or the first yeah. time you do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a lie. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what kind of sex you're having. If it's unprotected, it's unprotected. And they're saying, well, yeah, but and this one kind of confused me a little bit. They're just saying, just watch for abrasions, cankers, and cuts. So they're almost contradicting their message here by saying, well. You should just say yes if it's unprotected, it's unprotected, and leave it at that, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, getting one STD means you're immune later. <laughs> like the chicken pox, you can yeah. only get it once. No, no. no, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. No, you, you, you can get uh, 
everything multiple times if you're not taking care of it. Oh, like even your crabs can have crabs. crabs. Oh. Even smaller crabs running around on top of the. Oh my god! Oh, oh you know. god! Okay, so here I am. I'm like 16 or 17 years old. I'm working as in a restaurant, and my you know my grandmother's Italian, so she puts the S's on the end of everything, right? You know, spaghettis, thunders, lightnings. So there's S's on the end of okay. everything, right? Okay. So we just got back from Jersey. And we'd had a whole bunch of seafood. So I turn to the other cooks in the line and say, have you guys ever had crabs? Oh, God. Oh, my God. It was hilarious. Oh, God. <laughs> to this day, we were just busted. I'm like, why did that? That did not. Oh, my. it took, took me a second. Oh, they, they busted out laughing because I'm, uh, it was hysterical. So whenever uh, I think of crazy. Sorry, that just always no, comes back. No, no, no. I've got one. My, um, mm-hmm. An old boyfriend of mine um, is an architect and his like first job out of college, he had like this predatory female ar- architect for a boss. And um, she was always coming on to him. And one time she, she came up and leaned over his drafting table. I mean, she'd so be fired for sexual harassment now, you know, mm-hmm. for doing this crap. And she had a, a genital crab on her eyebrow. And he's like, what is that, Susan, on your eyebrow? And she looks in the mirror and, and she's like, Aah! and goes running off. She left him alone after that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. Um, and then the last one, though, guys, is um, women get tested for STDs automatically when they get pap smears. No, you have to ask for it. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do have to ask. So. Always ask. Mm-hmm. Like, just just give me the whole damn kit and caboodle. Why not? I know. They, they actually, I mean, they were drawing a crap ton of blood out of um, out of me, you know, in the hospital for all this sort of stuff. And they said, you want to be tested for anything? <laughs> I mean, they actually said. <laughs> While they were while they were sucking and all the ass, I said, I think I'm fine because I, you know, I've recently been to doctors and a whole bunch of different stuff, long term relationship, blah blah blah. But they did, um, they did ask, yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure, you know, they just it could have just been that particular uh, nurse or that particular doctor or that you know it doesn't mean that everyone's going to do it. So you can just ask, yeah. You know, run the screen, go for it. Let's check it out for sure. Yeah. So Colleen, we got to talk about the robot. Mm-hmm. Please, let's just lay this out there for everybody. So, it's in this week's or this month's Men's Health, and the, it's it's the sex robots are coming, and it's another article about the two companies that make these really high end, anywhere from six to like ten thousand dollar dolls, and it's you know, and 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 they're actually, I mean, I, I, one gentleman actually allowed himself to be profiled in this article. Wow! So it's not even a you know, there, 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 there's not even an alias anymore. I mean, you know, the, the sex dolls are out of the closet. That's amazing. And, you know, and, and then a whole bunch of stuff going through there. And I'm like, I don't know if folks are, are more appalled because they're paying $7,000 <laughs> for, for to, to, you know, for, you know masturbate with a really fancy toy mm-hmm. or whether they feel like, you know, they won't, you know, relate to real women. This guy still goes on real dates. What d- but he had to hide his sex doll from one that he brought home, but, but which freaked it, me out. But I'm like, I like, and I'm like, wow. How do you like leave your sex? How do you not know your sex doll sitting in your bedroom? <laughs> I mean, it's life size for freak's sake. Yeah. And it just, you know, it, 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 but but I find it fascinating that it was, you know, that this is now, you know, in like a, like was it a four or five page article it's about huge the article. whole thing mm-hmm. in, and I'm like. That, that sex has become, you know, I'm like, well, maybe I like this, you know, because just like, okay, someone, this is how someone's decided. I mean, they're not going out and harassing people. He's, this is how he's masturbating. You know, if he wants to have a little bit more fantasy in his masturbation, who am I to say that the guy, <laughs> the guy can't spend $7,000 on a, on a sex robot. I'm not sure how I feel about maybe someone having a relationship with a toy you know if it actually if they start to sort of read your moods or understand your words or something but i mean at one point he did say occasionally he just takes the vagina out and does it so i think he knows it's a thing mm-hmm. <laughs> as opposed to those i mean there's some actual sexual fetishes oh i can't remember pig male or something it's named after some greek person who like falls in love with a statue okay um and it's like a fetish to be in love with like statues or robots or other um inanimate objects we talked about that last week a little bit yeah yeah, yeah i think so um i this you know it's funny this makes me extremely uncomfortable but not for any sexual reasons like because because of the industry i'm in i'm like do what you want you want to have sex with 
you know, you want to spend ten thousand dollars, have have a relationship, fall in love with a piece of plastic. Cool, fine. It only makes me uncomfortable because I am convinced that robots are going to take over the world, and I don't know you and Stephen Hawking. Yes, these these sex bots are not getting programmed with the three laws of robotics to not harm humans. I don't. I just don't trust them. I don't want a a sex toy that could someday kill me. Or, that's that's my biggest concern. Or chew up your bits. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm just saying, you know, how do you know? But, you know, his name, he names her in the article. Her name mm -hmm. is Taffy. And um, he said that some women, when they find out about this, run screaming away from him and others come flocking to him. Some mm -hmm. women find it a turn on and others, I don't know. Colleen, what do you think? I, you know. I, it, and once again, I suppose it's not any different than bringing a, it's just bringing a toy into the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And so if someone wanted to have a threesome without any emotional involvement whatsoever, this would be yeah. the way to go for mm -hmm. it. I, you know, I just, one, I don't like to share. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think that they're, you know, whether, you know, I, I think having a full blown doll, they would be too close to sharing. <laughs> and two, just, I was like, and I'm like, I, then again, I guess it's not any, I mean, really, it's just a really expensive masturbator. It's not any different than a dildo or, or a vibrator or, or a But I pump. think it is, though, because well, it's got a head and hair and clothes and a name. And I mean, you assuming the person's relationship, like mm -hmm. this guy seems to treat it like a very expensive masturbator. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to go home on a date with someone and he's like, meet my girlfriend, Bianca, we're in love. We have discussions. I, I, I clothe her and feed her and bathe her. You know, what I, that is a completely different, um, that's a whole nother animal, I guess. But it's funny, whenever I, we talk about this stuff, it just, I know I mentioned it before on the podcast, but I want to tell everyone and all our listeners again, there is the movie Lars and the Real Girl mm -hmm. with Ryan Gosling about a man who falls in love with a sex robot. And it is this, like the sweetest it's romantic. It's sad and heartwarming. Oh my God, there's a scene where he gets in a fight with her and it just breaks your heart. You're like, stop being mean to the robot. Like, it, it Lars and the Real Girl. Everyone should watch it. Are there puppies <laughs> and ducklings in it too? <laughs> Yeah, I still have not seen it. I, I do want to see that movie. It I made me fall in love with Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I'm not going to. Like, I'm one of those where like, I'm like. Like, you needed a reason to fall I know, in love. I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's Ryan Gosling. I was I mean, kind of give or take until I saw this. And some of it is he's kind of a nerd, which I appreciate. And he's got a mustache, which I also really appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you see the uh, I don't know if it was Fallon or when when he and Russell Crowe were on and he walked off? No, did you hear about that? No, yeah, and they I mean, and I still don't know if it's real. I need to go back and find out what. But he walked off stage. He's like, "Oh, are you saying you didn't need me to make the movie either?" And he walked off the set. And oh. I don't know if it was a setup or what, huh. but it was pretty kind of like, "Oh my," you know. And Russell Crowe has sort of a mixed reputation of mm -hmm. being occasionally salty if right. you will right so i don't know i mean maybe there was, really was something to it but you know mm. they just did the movie together that's funny i really like that my weekend plan is to see that movie i'm yeah. really looking forward to that movie the nice guys i think it's called the nice guys yeah it looks good well guys um i think probably all we have time for today which is no problem this other stuff definitely will hold but i really want to go through i thought this was hysterical i really like what this author did she um it was five lies that books and movies are telling you about sex and the intro paragraph, it brings up oh, 50 shades of gray <laughs> and saying, you know, look, you know, people, the chances of everybody doing that kind of acrobatics and being so up for it all the time as often and it going as perfectly as it does in that movie, forget about it, right? That's mm -hmm. her premise. But what she did is she, t she had several different men and women say what they call bullshit, okay? And so the, I thought I'd throw these out there and see if you guys agree, disagree. Um. This is a guy, John. He says, um, they always make it seem like women and men orgasm at the same time, and then that makes them soulmates. I don't think that's true. And they make women crazy looking for that type of thing. And this came from a guy. I'm like, I like this guy already. Mm -hmm. He's like, quit fucking with women's heads. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's no, very it, true. That simultaneous thing is, it is very rare. I mean, it can happen, you know, but yeah. <laughs> 
no, that's how it, uh, the, yeah, that, that's the, the, the climactic end of the movie or this or that or what's going through there or the, or the you know, part in the romance. Yeah, that's just sort of fantasy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lisa says, well, from my collection of romance novels and from watching movies, it always makes it seem like a girl's first time is magical. But I remember when I lost my virginity, it was difficult and painful, even though I loved the guy. These people have no idea what it's really like. It's true. It is. It's, I mean, it's painful. It is, yeah. It is. I don't. Pretty much for everyone. So I is. can't say that I've ever read anything that probably had or even remotely truthful deflowering in it. It's either you know, uh, either either something that was thrust upon you know someone you know with uh, against their will, or it's some sort of bizarre ass fantasy where you're like, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, and just the that term deflowering bugs me. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a flower anymore. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I'm still a goddamn flower. Uh, I'm a delicate flower. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I always say, what you I'm said. a delicate flower. Flower. Um, Millie says, "Sex in the shower is not as easy as they make it look." She calls bullshit on the shower shower sex. That's hard to say. Shower sex scenes. Mm-hmm. Unless there's a bench. Okay. Yeah, you gotta have the right. You, know, you gotta have the right shower. You gotta have the right props. You gotta have the. You know, like you. Know, no, I, th- I, I really think that some people probably, I was, I was looking, uh, ended up with that handicapped room, unfortunately traveling with a whole bunch of people, so you know, didn't get used, but I was looking at the, the handicapped accessible room with all the bars and the shower and the, and the set, and I went, hmm, I just kept looking at that, <laughs> like, I'm not getting any shot of figuring this out, am I? But, but this we like, could make this work. But yeah. you saw potential, didn't I, you? I saw potential. <laughs> so I'm thinking, in your traditional shower, it's not that easy. But I'm thinking, next time, you know, if there's a, you know, check out those handicap accessible showers in oh, hotel yeah. rooms. Yeah. It I looks, think same with, like, bodies of water. I don't know if water, that's yeah. on that list. Like, uh, sex in the ocean or a pool oh, yeah, or yeah. a lake. And a, no, I don't no. Know, no the chlorine yeah. and little... I don't minnows swimming up. Yeah. I don't yeah. want lake matter. No. Right, no. right. As my sister says, a lily pad enema. No. Mm. <laughs> um, Shireen comes out with uh, sex is, I, I, I want to meet this girl. Sex is not perfect. There are accidents and many of them are awkward. I've accidentally punched. My knees have found themselves in awkward and painful places. You could find yourself in the hospital for only trying to play cowgirl. Mm. That's true. Oh. Yeah, it's no, true. Yeah, it 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 is not. It is it is it is it is a incredibly fun yet awkward endeavor. Yes. No matter what, moving uh, around, catching someone's hair, elbowing. Yeah, I mean. Uh, oh, and, and then 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 there's the like the the leg or foot cramp. Mm, this oh, is the worst. Yeah, the Charlie horse. Charlie horse. Like, ah! Okay, get off, get off. <laughs> God, I almost took out someone's eye not that long ago. Oh, <laughs> my guys no. all like, oh, I wear heels. And I'm like, okay. Oh. <laughs> but you've, I don't walk in heels. And I'm like trying to maneuver legs with like a six inch dagger out coming out of the bottom of my foot. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm going to. I told, I was like, I am doing this for you. If I hurt you, <laughs> It is not my fault. You are taking full blame if you get a yes. heel implanted somewhere Where in your body. Did you have him sign to that effect prior No, to I should have. I yeah. should have had my Fifty Shades style, like, lover's contract. Okay. And <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, well, this, one, this last one, David, um, he said, well, I dreamed up hot steaming sex because my girl at the time went away for four months. So he, like, spent four months building himself up. And he goes, we were doing it together. And the steam that always appears in the movie just wasn't happening. The grabbing, the roughing up, holding and tugging wasn't as sexy. And I'm sure it didn't look half as good either. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. No, no. The, uh, uh, the, uh, oh God, that, like the, the movie with, uh, Rene Russo and, um, uh, Thomas Crown Affair. Oh God. Oh my God. They have, it, I mean like, yeah, that is total movie sex. Cause you're so like, funny. they're on like the stairs. No one's having sex on the stairs. That's impossible. You're gonna die. <laughs> no, exactly. Just going through there. And oh my god, I just remember that. But you know, there was one thing in there that was missing. I can't believe they did it because this happens a lot. Anal sex takes time. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> they never show that in the movies or this or that or they, in the books. They move from this to that. No, yeah. there's a lot of lube. There's a lot of time. There's a lot of oh, propping. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, that I was I was waiting for that one to show up. Yeah, so it didn't six appear. Things, in the it should be it should be six things in there because that's one that a, a lot of people just don't think about. You know, because it just it just it just they, you know there's a lot of editing. 
in books oh. and movies and oh, you yeah. don't see all the prep work. Yeah. yeah, you notice how people in movies also never go to the bathroom? Yeah. You oh know? my God, that's so funny. So they're probably yeah. not a good judge <laughs> of what reality is. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, and we even had we've had people um, very familiar with the porn industry here on the show and, and talk about how even the porn stars themselves are disappointed that it can't be shown how much real really prep work is. I mean, even if, even if you're witnessing the penetration, you have no idea how much time was spent getting to the point where it would just go like that. Mm -hmm. And they some of the like, you know, they feel bad. Jessica Drake said, I feel bad because I don't want people to think that their experience is not right or bad because they can't live up to what they're seeing. It's because they don't right. have control over that. That's the yeah. thing. Books and um i mean they are um they're fantasy they're mm -hmm. not reality so you can never look at in any f facet of your life i think if you're looking at me trying to measure yourself up to the fantasy that is entertainment made for to entertain you mm -hmm. you're you're always going to fall short you know sex or anything else so I Just mean, the airbrush, it's, it's kind of like the, the, you know, a parallel to airbrushing women on magazine covers and the models and everything else. It's right. like, it's, or the perfect pictures in the cookbooks where my food never quite looks like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> be aware that your life is going to be more like a Pinterest fail page <laughs> than actual Pinterest. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> Oh no. oh no. Oh, I set her oh. off. I'm sorry. Oh, Colleen. <laughs> Colleen just turned completely okay. purple. You okay? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> yeah. However, I have I have to say I've seen some pretty bodacious actual true undoctored food porn on Facebook lately. Mm -hmm. mm. Some of my friends have done some pretty dynamic stuff. So, you know, just aspire, but don't don't yeah. be too hard on yourself. Right? Indeed. Yeah, and I feel like you don't because really, I mean, to, for the most part, even if sex is sloppy and awkward, it's well, sex. Right. You need to get yourself <laughs> off, not beat yourself up. Yep. Ah, ah, mm -hmm. that's our. That, that should be our little proverb for the show for the week. Get yourself off, not beat yourself up. Well, Colleen is now holding her side, so I think we'll go ahead and sign off for this week. Yeah, I broke a rib coughing, so. Oh, yeah. okay, just now? No, no, no. no oh, no. good. Thursday. Oh, good. Sorry, sorry. Well, we, I hope that all of our audience, uh, please don't hurt your ribs, mm. and uh, <laughs> download us again next week. Have a great one, you guys. Bye. Sounds great. Bye.